Welcome ladies and gentlemen, music lovers and audiophiles. Today I'll be reviewing the Dolly IO12 headphones. I hope you enjoy it. Let's start with a quick summary. Dolly is primarily known as a speaker manufacturer, but they've made headphones for some time now, I think about five years. As we've seen with Focal, great speaker manufacturers can do interesting and desirable things with headphones. They seem to have a lot of research capability and they really seem to be focused on this burgeoning market. Dali has recently introduced a new headphone called the IO12. The IO12 is set up to work in a variety of environments. For example, via Bluetooth from your phone, via a USB cable from a computer, via an analog cable from a headphone amplifier, and in noisy environments by activating onboard active noise cancellation. This gives users substantial flexibility in tailoring their hookup to their listening environment and strongly suggests that Dolly had a big interest in maximizing quality without insisting on the use of impractical peripheral devices at all times. Not everyone is willing to carry a headphone amp around with them to a brew pub. The IO12 is priced at $14.99. If that price is out of your range, or if you have the philosophical conviction that nothing should be priced based on its quality or intellectual property or advanced materials, you can switch to another video now. For a quick summary of the IO12, and maybe an indication that you should hang with me, I will say that the IO12 has a sound profile that is exceptional. In fact, the Dali IO12 does musically valuable things that I haven't heard in headphones at twice the price. And it has features that those headphones generally don't have. That said, the IO12, flexible though it is, imposes some trade-offs that you should know about to decide if it's the right headphone for you. That's true for essentially all headphones, but the subtlety and complexity of the IO12 trade-offs merit some explanation. Let's dive into the IO12 itself. The IO12 is what we might call a medium size, over-the-ear, closed-back headphone. It isn't as large as some Hi-Fi Man models, but it isn't compact, like some on-ear or folding headphones. Here they are, you can get the idea. I'll show them to you on my head. The major physical characteristic is probably that the IO12 has a high comfort level in my experience because the ear cups surround your ear and the pressure on your head is about as light as possible without letting the headphones slide around. You don't want to look down at your keyboard and have the headphones slip forward. This is one of the few headphones where I thought the designers nailed the pressure level of the ear cups on your head. Now, of course, heads have different sizes and shapes, so your mileage may vary. The comfort, by the way, is assisted by the IO12's weight, which is in the light range for headphones like this at 372 grams. And maybe just as importantly, seems surprisingly well distributed by the head band, which has this squishy material that just seems more compliant than is done on some other headphones that just seem to have a piece of foam with some fake leather wrapped around them and not really a particularly sophisticated kind of foam. The IO12 is meant to be run from a USB A to C cable that connects to your computer. I say meant because Dolly is clear that this USB A to C connection is what will deliver the best quality. Wireless connection is via Bluetooth which by design can't offer high data rates. And the analog connection goes through an A to D conversion that lowers quality a bit, according to Dolly. In my listening tests, I focused on that USB connection. The IO12 offers two sound profiles, hi-fi and bass. As much as I like bass, I was scared of the bass setting until I tried it. Both bass and hi-fi are usable and well-judged profiles, and I ended up being glad to have them at the push of a button on the right ear cup. I almost wish they had called them Hi-Fi 1 and Hi-Fi 2 
because rather than doing something dramatic, they seem tailored to addressing the changes in bass balance that have occurred in recordings over time. You can take a look at our MBL 101X review uh, for an interview that covers more data on the changes in recording curves over the course of history since stereo began in 1958. You may be dismayed that a full graphic EQ isn't offered through an app, though I would observe that such tools are often better at creating a sonic mess that they are than they are at usefully addressing real problems. More on this later. The IO-12 also uses Dolly's soft magnetic compound. This is a non-iron-based magnetic material that has less measured hysteresis than iron-based magnetic materials used in most other headphones. Not electrostatics, of course, and that turns out to be an interesting comparison. My listening notes, made before I read Dolly's white paper on the technology, seem to indicate that something special is going on in the drivers. Moving on to practical matters, if active noise cancellation efficacy is key to your use case, I can only say that the ANC works. Naturally, I don't know the degree to which it will clean up the various environments you'll be in. There is a rather easy to use volume switch on the right ear cup that requires a tap on the top side. Let me see if I can show you this up here or down here to lower. The separation of buttons by, I don't know, two or three inches is an improvement on most such setups that sometimes have two little buttons on right next to each other on the bottom of an edge or something like that. Anyway, some change in surface finish to give you feedback on the dolly is that your finger is properly positioned would be nice, but honestly, this is a really good setup. The finish of the IO-12 is nice and the build quality seems solid. They come with a case though I'm at a loss to think of a use case for these things, no pun intended. Feel free to expand my understanding in the comments if you want to, but I'm just not sure what I'm supposed to do with a thing like this, although it's nicely made. Just a brief interruption, esteemed viewers. As you may know, I'm Tom Martin, Chief Content Officer of The Absolute Sound. We have a new product. It's on the Substack platform, and we're going to do some interesting things with Substack. First of which is reader questions and answers. Each Monday, readers will submit questions. We'll pick the most interesting ones and we'll answer the questions on Friday. We'll also have early access to articles and special blogs that don't appear anywhere else. We hope you'll join us. It's only a cost of a cup of coffee per month. Just check on the screen or in the show notes below. Thanks, and now back to the show. Now for a discussion of sound quality. All right, this is where the Dolly IO-12 gets really interesting. Let me start with the observation that the IO-12 has a level of transparency and immediacy that makes you think thoughts like, could this be the best headphone for audiophiles ever? With high-res music files, the IO-12 does a simply beautiful job of separating instruments. Each instrument has a clarity and a place in space that is so much more like real music than you may be accustomed to with other headphones that you could easily press the Buy Now button after five or six tracks of listening on the IO-12s. If only Dolly had a Buy Now button on the right ear cup. This spaciousness isn't the sound staging of a great speaker setup or live music. It's the presentation of each instrument in a way that opens up the musical line and lets you listen into the music. For example, I listened to the Eben recording of the Mozart quintets and marveled at the sonority and tonality of each instrument. Similar thoughts came up on the Pittsburgh Symphony recording of the Tchaikovsky Fifth. Tchaikovsky knows a thing or two about melody and the IO-12 renders the feeling beautifully. Switching to Lady Gaga's Joanne, I again felt that each musician had a place in the mix rather than being muddled. You may know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. And the bass on the dancier tracks was solid. Well, sound was generally wonderful. The same thing is true of EST's A Strange Place for Snow. 
The piano and the bass just play off each other in an engaging way, and the bass definition is quite good, while also sounding rich. John Lee Hooker's 1961 recording, Burnin', has a spotlight on each instrument, along with a great sense of the recording venue. If you know the difference in sound between, say, 2496 high res and Bluetooth audio, you will know the extra degree of transparency the IO-12 brings to music, at least high res music, without seeming to get there via tricks. It just sounds like the special magnetic system and cone materials really work to lower distortion. Or maybe I should say they mostly do. The raw frequency response curves of almost all headphones look a bit like a cross-sectional profile of the Alps or the Rockies. This is partly because they are trying to follow the so-called Harmon curve, which specifies the various frequency deviations from flat needed to address the preferences empirically expressed by a panel of listeners in the 2010 to 2012 period when Harmon was doing research on this. This is probably needed, this curve adjustment is probably needed due to the fact that headphones don't fully engage your outer ear or head the way natural sounds do, and thus headphones benefit from some frequency response correction. Not only is the Harman curve not perfect, I'm not faulting what the Harman people did, it's just empirically derived, and you could argue there is no such thing as perfection in that world, but also headphone makers can't follow the Harman curve precisely. Almost all headphones end up with some bumps and dips in the treble region, frequency response, when measured against the Harman curve, and not all of these deviations from the Harman curve are voicing choices. Some of them are just, we couldn't quite get there. The deviations of the IO-12 are relatively small compared to some of what is mar on the market. But I need to note that I hear a modest bump in the lower treble, perhaps it's in the five to seven kilohertz region. This occasionally ends, lends some unwanted spice to instruments in this region. They just get a little more attacky or a little bit more fizzy than they should be. In the next generation of the IO-12, it would be great if Dolly tuned another DSP filter to nip this bump in the bud as they did with the bass mode. Knowing the exact frequencies and cue of such frequency deviations makes beneficial tuning much easier for an OEM to get right than for you to get right. And, of course, a lot of EQ in headphones isn't tuned at all to correcting errors. It's just for overriding the engineer's choices, so you don't even have frequency bands at the right point to deal with the kinds of things that I'm talking about here. In the end, this error to me seemed uh, somewhere between minor and modest. I should also comment that the top to bottom, meaning low frequency to high frequency balance of the IO-12, deserves some coverage. These are, I would say, naturally balanced headphones when you're talking about general frequency response. I could describe them as having flat frequency response, which they mostly do, but they have that lower treble bump that I referred to earlier, and they have some lower bass roll-off. The bass roll-off isn't as severe as what you find on many open back headphones that can be, you know, 10 dB down at 20 hertz. So you might not notice or be bothered by the minor roll-off in the IO-12s. However, I think some listeners, especially those focused on modern hip-hop or electronica, might find the bass slightly too light. You can click the bass sound profile on the right ear cup, there's a button there, and I would, and I did. This brings a nice balance to the results, at least to my mind, with these recordings. But I do have to say that my experience talking to many, many people about various headphones is that almost inevitably some, and this might include you, will want more bass. Hi-Fi Man has some models that do this, as do the Beats Pros and the Focal Batisse in the category of wireless headphones. None of these, however, are without trade-offs, of course. 
The other thing you might notice is that the IO-12 can seem dynamically restricted on some music. I missed this at first because I happen to play a lot of music that works at a slightly lower volume level, like 77 dB instead of 80 dB on average. As you get into more recordings of the late 70s or 1980s rock and roll kind of stuff, you find that the IO-12 can sound a bit compressed. Some of this, I think, is due to the nature of recordings of the era. For example, I played, played 2112 by Rush, which isn't the greatest recording, even though I have the new and high-res version. And I noticed that I really had a desire for more dynamics. That's kind of what I say on a lot of Rush recordings. Uh, but it, it felt a little bit like a bigger issue here. I also found on that album that I wanted a bit more volume as well. Finding that I was near the top of the IO-12 volume button, I tried the analog input with my DCS Lena headphone amp. This was better in terms of maybe plus 3 dB in volume, which is about what I wanted, and you'd be surprised how such a seemingly small ch change can affect the realism of the results. And I also wanted a more dynamic rendering, and I found it. I do think the treble resolution suffered a bit, though fortunately this was not accompanied by the IO-12 getting brighter. I noticed a similar effect on a few other albums like Television's new Rhino Mix of Marquee Moon or Paramore's This Is Why. Again, these tended to be rock or hip-hop kind of music, maybe a little bit compressed. But in the end, I concluded that part of the issue is the IO-12 USB input uh, simply, which uses the internal amp, it simply runs out of juice at a safe listening level point, maybe too safe. All right, let me summarize. None of these caveats about trade-offs should take away from the signature accomplishment of the DALI IO-12, which, frankly, is stunning in its ability to allow you to listen into the recording and hear the instrumental lines with a tonality and airiness that's both unusual and beautiful. And to my ears, the way the IO-12 does this is not by invoking a party trick, and the end result, therefore, is that this isn't something of minor note. Rather, I think the IO-12 gets at something of fundamental musical value, which is probably why I enjoyed them so much. On top of that, the IO-12 is distinguished from many wired headphones that might compete on sound quality, to varying degrees of success, I would note, but most certainly do not have the flexibility for use in so many environments with so many different sources. On top of that, the IO-12s are very comfortable and easy to use, or, in a word, exceptional. I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you have, please click on the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, check in the show notes for the URL where you can sign up for our free weekly newsletter. And of course, as always, we would love it if you would subscribe to the Absolute Sound magazine. We've been publishing it for a little bit over 50 years now, and it has some of our flagship material in it. Hope to see you again.